Okay, so uh, January 2011, question one. Live with the uh, May Revision crew, who's just been recorded. Right, 200 candidates each took the two exam papers. Um, estimate the median mark for each of the papers. So there's, there's 200 who did them. Now, we just said that to find the median, you do M plus 1 over 2. Except if there's more than about 50 items of data. Because once you get above about 50, then you no longer worry about adding one. So when we're looking for the median, actually 200 is quite a big group, <coughs> so we're just going to look for the 100th person in each class. And um, it will annoy your, your math teacher if you do this, because the paper won't be able to be used for future classes. But on your exam paper, in the exam room, you put your ruler on the exam paper, and you draw a line across from 100 to where it meets the two lines. And then you draw a line down and read off your figure that way. So I've not got my line particularly exact down. But how does that look? Okay, and so uh, so thinking about what we've got there, I reckon that for paper one, well that looks like that's 38, and for paper two. The median looks to me like it 61. is, what is that, 61? Yeah. Looks like 61. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, what an easy two marks that is. State with a reason. Which of the two papers was the easier one? Paper two. Paper two? Because yeah. it's got a because the median is higher, yeah. Is that, that funny thing where you look at it and you think, oh, paper one, but this line is much higher, so that must have been easier. But you've actually got to think about the, the maths of what's going on behind it. Um, the median score for paper two was much higher. More students scored, scored higher marks than on paper two. Um, so that's, that's the one that looks like it's easier. So for part two, we're going to say paper two. Um, and the, the answer is exactly that, that the median is higher. Oh, this isn't working very well. Okay. Um, part three, I've maybe not left enough space to do part three here. It is suggested that the marks on paper two were less varied than those on paper one. Use interquartile ranges to comment on this suggestion. So we're now being asked to calculate the interquartile range for all of this data. So, uh, so let's work that out. That's 150 that we're drawing our line across now, and 50, and seeing where these come down. Doing it on a whiteboard is perhaps not the best place to be doing this because it's not that easy to see what's going on. Think about these figures. Have I got these in about the right places? So, um, paper one, I'm going to go for. What's that? 25 as the lower quartile and 55 for the upper quartile. an interquartile range of 30. And uh, paper 2, what do we reckon? I think we're looking at 73 for the upper quartile. Let's be consistent. This board is big enough now, this one. Um, and lower quartile uh, 46. So an interquartile range of the difference between those. 27. <coughs> and the question said, it suggested that the marks on paper 2 were less varied than those on paper 1. Use interquartile range to comment on this suggestion. Well, I reckon uh, as long as we make a coherent argument, we can probably argue 
both ways for this. Um, I, I think I think Marx and Paper Two were less varied. Because the interquartile range was smaller. I think if you decided to jump the other way and say that the, uh, the suggestion is not particularly well founded because there's not much difference between the interquartile range, then you may well get the credit for that as well. Um, And see if they allowed it. A little difference or similarly varied if they allowed that if you took that. So you know you jump in away with that. Okay. The minimum mark for grade A, the top grade on paper one, was ten marks lower than the minimum mark for grade A on paper two. <coughs> Given that twenty-five of the candidates gained grade A in paper one, find the number of candidates again grade A in paper two. It's one of those questions that you have to read it a few times before you have any idea what is going on at all with that. Um, so it's saying, well actually the, the solid thing that we've got here is that 25 candidates gained grade A in paper one. That's, that's the thing that we can actually get some serious information out of. So <coughs> paper one, 25 candidates. So that's the top 25, so we're looking at where that line comes across, and it looks like it meets about that point. So is that 69 marks for a grade A on that one? Um, I think. So for part four. Paper, which was that? Paper one. And the minimum mark for grade A on paper one was 10 marks lower than the minimum mark for grade A on paper two. So on paper two, it must have been 79 marks. So now we're going back to this and we're looking where the 79 mark point hit it, it's there, and that looks like that corresponds to, what is that, um, 160, 170. <laughs> So, so that was at now oh, where are we? Um, is that are we are we right on that? So seventy nine is just under that point. I can't I can't see this on here clearly. What, are we, what figure is that? What do you reckon? 163-ish? <coughs> so the 163 less than A, so that leaves us with 37 who got grade A. as you want on your exam paper, really you know, use a ruler and, and carefully look at these things and, and mark them off. Um, right, the mean and standard deviation 
of the marks on paper 1 were 36.5 and 28.2. Later, a marking error was discovered and it was decided to add one mark to each of the 200 on paper 1. State the mean and standard deviation of mean marks. Well, we are going to talk a bit more about mean and standard deviation as, as time goes on, but that's, this was the only real bit that it came up on this paper. Um, the, the mean, well, well, if we add one to everything, then that's going to shift all of the numbers one unit higher up, and so the mean would move one unit higher up as well, wouldn't it? So the mean, if we add one to everything, is going to be one mark greater. So the mean will be 37.5. But the 28.2, that's a measure of the spread of the data. And if all we've done is we've taken all the data as it was spread out and moved it one mark further up, the spread of the data hasn't altered at all. So the standard deviation remains unchanged at 28.2. And there we go, that would be our answer to that. And it was, it was just quite a long and irritating first question, wasn't it? Um, there we go. And that's maths. And that's